It's like in China to this day, the Chinese worship gods in their villages. And if the village starts doing poor economically, they'll go look for a village that's doing well economically, and they'll throw away the gods that aren't benefiting them, and they'll bring the gods from the village that's doing well economically. It's a very pragmatic type of idolatry. So this is what the, these people were doing. They were worshiping all of these idols. And the, the Mithraic teaching had, was, was the, the, the Mithraic God was born on December 25th. This is in their own, what's, the research has been done, born on the, December 25th. He was called Sol Invictus, the conquering sun god. The sun god. And this is why Christians worship on Sunday, not S-O-N, S-U-N. It's not the Son of God. It's Sunday, the day of soul, the day of the Sun God. And this is important, and it's going to be connected with the idea of the Messiah Dajjal, because the Messiah Dajjal is also a Sun God. The Sun God, they believed, was the giver of life. In the same way the Sun gives life to plants through photosynthesis, as we know in biology now. They they believed that the sun god would also give life after death. People would die, they would be resurrected. In the same way that Mithra, who kills himself, he does an act of self-immolation and kills himself for the sins of mankind. He becomes a scapegoat. This is Mithra's act. He had 12 disciples. The disciples represented the 12 zodiacal constellations, right? There are 12, you know, in horoscope, which we do not believe in. And Muslims that, I saw an ad in a Muslim paper of a Arraf. You know what a Arraf is in Arabic? Arraf. It's like an astrologer, somebody diviner that does that. And it said, Arraf wa shi'ari al amana wa thiqa. This guy said, I'm an astrologer and my, my uh, to their book was commanded to kill the Arrafin and the Munajimin. The Jews don't believe in that. But the, 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 the Mithras believed in this 12 zodiacal constellations and each one of them represented a disciple. There is no number given of the Hawariyun. There's no number that says they were 12 in the Islamic tradition. And, and Jesus, quote unquote, making 13, which is what the Christians call the devil's number. Very interesting. I mean, they're so superstitious, they don't even have a 13th floor. In, I don't know if they do that here, but in the United States, you go from 12 to 14 in a, in a building. They don't have a 13th floor. So this is their number. They call that the devil's number, 13. And this is the number of Mithra and his disciples. Now what happens with Mithra, Paul literally takes the Mithraic teaching and embellishes it with aspects of the Christian teaching. He took, what he took was the death of Mithra, who, who transforms himself in the Roman Empire is where the Vatican now stands. This is historical evidence. It is where the Vatican now stands. The mother of Mithra was worshipped. The mother of Mithra was worshipped. So this was all part of this uh, redaction of the Judaic teaching, the Semitic Christianity becomes this Mithraic reality, completely transformed, completely altered, until it is unrecognizable. Saint Augustine and the Christians were so bothered by the similarities between Christianity and Mithraism that they would not mention Mithraism by its name. They called Mithra the fellow in the cap, the Phrygian cap. They wouldn't even mention him by his name. And Saint Augustine says in his writings that he met a priest from the fellow in the cap. And and he said to St. Augustine, you know, our, our man is a Christian also. In other words, it's really the same teaching and doctrine. The Christians completely wiped out the books, the temples, all of the evidence of Mithraism was completely wiped out. And that's why it's only recently, in the last hundred years, that scholars, anthropologists, and uh, archaeologists have been digging up all of this stuff and finding out about this teaching. Extraordinary.